the new album is done. It's called Shockwave. It'll be out at mm. some point in 2022. The new single is out, uh, Pretty Little Broken Thing. The new music video just dropped. So what can fans expect from this new album? More of that. <laughs> More of yeah. that single type? Yeah, like yeah. we definitely, we went all out to the next level with this record. And we had, uh, you know, this pandemic uh, brought about a pretty crazy opportunity for us, right? Like we, mm -hmm. we had been able to work with Neil Sanderson on our last record, but only with uh, Wild, right? We, he co-wrote with Neil on that song. So it was taking mm -hmm. the best of that and bringing it to this new record. And it was just such a crazy opportunity because otherwise he would have been on the road, right? Three Days Grace is touring every mm -hmm. day of the year. So this was an opportunity for us to be able to work together and um, be a part of his team too, because he has so many contacts, like for mixing, mastering, musicians, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it was a very cool experience. So you, you're going to see a different side of us, but it is still the roots of us having, you know, gotten together and just hit record in a jam space. And we wrote that riff to that beat. And then actually this time more of the songwriting came out of us, right? We really, really honed in on the, the craftsmanship of songwriting. Mm -hmm. So, and it's about, you know, it's about us like, and our, our journey through everything and how we've grown and, you know, the ups and downs and just everything was meant to be in this moment. So I just, I really hope people love this record as much as we do. I, it was such an awesome time putting it together. Like the, probably the most fun, not to say that anything past wasn't fun, but we literally spent a year working on this record with Neil, which that's an insane amount of time. I, it wasn't every day, but it was like every other day. Every other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was the, the songs on this album are just, I, I, you know, like we, Renee makes up a good point, like of saying, like, we hope that people like it and and or feel what we put together as much as we do. But I to be honest, like I'm not the songs are just are bigger. The songs are better. The the recording process is is, is more fine-tuned, like everything about it is on a, a higher level. Uh, because, and I say higher level, just meaning that we were able to put more time into it and really get into the details a lot more, but also keeping the same mentality of that launched this whole thing, which was Orleans, which is just don't force it. You know, like sometimes simple is the best thing and simplicity. We don't have to overcomplicate it. So it's like gauging what is right for the song and what is what keeps you pumped up and for us and like what where um when it's too much and like pull back on some stuff and like keep things simple or sometimes like let's really overcomplicate this part <laughs> so it's because like, we can and it's fun yeah exactly everything we did was just out of fun like, and we we really wanted to look at like this is let's try to write a three minute song and and uh or not try to write let, let's make this or this feels like a three minute song like how do we fill the rest of this out a certain way within this certain timeline and that's kind of the canvas you know like as an artist it's like this is this is this canvas looks this way and like how do we fill the canvas out of certain to to make it the best picture that it can be the best song it can be and uh and we always push ourselves in that process and we definitely with, did musically yeah and neil or neil what was great about him is that um he's ready to 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 grind and push us even further and we're always up for the challenge so um it was a really great working process with him and That's a really so great true. aspect because a lot of people or not a lot of people like other artists and different bands they don't like to hear that shit like they don't want to be when they start to get pushed they they just like revert back into their own the, themselves and just like fuck this person we like they don't know what they're, you know what I mean? yeah but it's like we we handle that 
very easily you know we don't we do like we can we can be pushed and we can be like for neil to all to always like push it to the level uh, like wanting more to try harder do this do that and stuff like we could we take that stuff to, and uh we we manage it very easily to be able to come up with something great and uh and sometimes it's like always it, you're gauging whether it's the right move or the wrong move and and the working relationship with neil we would push 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 and then sometimes it'd be like guys ah, you know what it's not the right move let's try to pull it back a bit and you know like maybe this the, the original lyric here was the best one and uh and then sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't <laughs> so it's like it's uh it, it sounds like a painful process, but we have a lot of fun going through that process. And uh, so on this new album, it's just a lot. We spent a lot more time in the creative zone, uh, uh, which yield, uh, which got us to yield a lot of great material in the past. And uh, so this album, I think it's like our Mona Lisa, <laughs> like it's like legit the best thing that we've done and the best songs. And it exposes more of us and our relationship and our, our journey through being a rock band and, and being a couple as well, going through this whole thing. And uh, that's what we wanted to bring forward the most. It's like, um, we have the time to really put that album together that reflects us the most. And we wanted to use that time to be like, this is now it's time. It's time to put our Mona Lisa together, our best work, our album that tells our story the most. And that's what this new album is. And we're so excited to, to release it to the world. Yeah. And, uh, we've had it in our pockets for a little bit now, but to the yeah. point, like I'm still listening to it by myself. And I, I used to like shame myself about that in the past, <laughs> like really you're listening to your own music, but like, I really enjoy listening to it. I, I love this record. And yeah. I think that's saying something too, right? Like it's just, well, I mean, we would, we would listen to our, obviously our other albums, but this one is just, there's something so addictive about it that is just different than the last recordings. And it's hard to ex explain what that feeling is because the last recordings, we love them so much too, but this one is just, we just put so much soul and heart into it and uh, so much work. And it's such a team effort too, with like the engineers that we, that we worked with and with Neil and um, in the mixing process, like it was, it was on a different level working with a whole new team that we've never worked with before. And there um, it's, we're very, I guess listening to it all the time is just because we're proud of it. We're so extremely proud that we did it. And you you know, we set out to be, I think in defense, like they say, you know, no one's going to love you if you don't love yourself on, I would say, you know, who's going to listen to your music if you don't love your music. Right. Uh, that's how I exactly. think about it. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I, I think that, you know, like um, the fact that we're having this interview and we have the album done and all that stuff is just a reflection that we accomplished our goals. And uh, and that's an amazing feeling. Now we're set and more. Yeah. And we're set. Never exactly. Ends, right? Yeah. Like we a... finished it. We finished. And now it's like, what's next? Yeah. <laughs> that's why you have to enjoy the journey, because when you accomplish 100%. something, if there's if it's not about the journey of having gotten there, then there's, you know, that sadness that kicks in because it's oh, done. Yeah. And, and I don't you know, I'm still the same person. You, you always yeah. have to have that next goal, uh, you know, to, to strive towards. Um, so yeah. I have to say that the sound quality of Pretty Little Broken Thing, like it sounds as good as anything I've, I've ever heard. Like, I don't I don't know. I don't know how something could sound better than that. Like, it's perfectly recorded, perfectly mixed, all that stuff like that. That's what a epic rock song, like a rock single. That's what it should sound like. I'm curious is that the Howard Benson touch? Like someone that's one of the best mixing engineers in the world that's worked with every big rock man on the planet. 
I yeah. think it's a I think I mean, it's a combination of a lot of things. Well, it's him and Joe, but and the engineering, yeah, and even the instruments, the amps, the drum kit, like performances as well. Yeah, right? you guys Everything. are getting yeah. better. Yeah, I yeah. mean, the goal ultimately, uh, like sonically, was that this this album has to match what is happening in active rock radio too. Like, it's got to stand up to it sonically as far as the actual what you're hearing at the, the, the end product pushing through the speakers of the headphones yeah that's kind of hard to explain to someone <laughs> yeah. who, who doesn't know the background of that stuff but so i mean you go to the best right so we had that connection with howard benson through neil sanderson and you know they're partners in judge and jury records and mm -hmm. i'm so glad that happened because like i can't even tell you like usually we're pretty fussy and we have a lot of revisions and stuff, but with this mix, it was just like, Oh my God, there it is. This is awesome. And mm -hmm. you would listen to it next to, you know, something else on rock radio that you absolutely love. You're like, Oh, it stands up against it. Like, this is so cool, but it's mm -hmm. ours. Right. Like, so I think as a band, there's that really cool moment. It's like when you first hear yourself on vinyl, right. It's like that really cool moment where you're like, ah, oh, this is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. This is where we wanted to be. It's a reflection of how far we've come. Yeah, I think it's the, 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 you know, when it's when something sounds a certain way, it's just that it sounds that way because of all the hard work over the years and like recognizing what it takes to make it sound that way, and recognizing what it takes to write a song a certain way and have a have the music um, feel a certain way. It's like years of hard work, years of of being a band and and recognizing how to piece that together and learning and it's like you learn from the, all these different things and like and you take the best aspects of that you keep building on the best aspects to get to a certain level yeah. but and sometimes I think that's a reflection of it but sometimes it's all about chance and having the stars align right it was just mm -hmm. in the cosmos that these people have <laughs> neil to be deGrasse available, tyson to if be you watch at, cosmos so. neil deGrasse you know exactly tyson what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it, it, it comes down to that just being fortunate to be able to work with the people that we work with yeah. to help the process but also that are just as excited about it as us and i think that oh, oh the cats just no animals were harmed in the making of this podcast <laughs> i i he hasn't come around yet um but you uh, check on him yeah for anyways but it, it is a reflection of how how we've um how far we've come in the process, I think. And, and, uh, and um, Neil helped that process, but we, it was also us like, you know, knowing what's good for us and what's not good for us and knowing like, you know, we always try to put egos aside and always try to focus. Song is number one and we want it to sound the best it can sound and uh, being able to, um navigate where how to do that i think is one of our best uh, uh best parts about us is we always we're able to navigate a certain way and recognize what the best thing for us is and knowing like um how we can achieve it if we just put ourselves out there to try to do it <laughs> you know and working with neil that was it it was just like you know, we could go, we could go into the studio. We know all these great producers. We know all these like great mixers and all this different stuff. And it's like, we have a budget to be able to do that. And it's like, what do we want to do? And it's like, you know what, working with Neil, it was like, we work really, really well together. And there's a really great connection. We know that he hasn't produced a full album yet, but the demo stuff that we do sometimes is just so incredible. And it's like, why don't we just see if he's up for it? Why don't we just see if we can, we can do an album together? So we put it out there and we're like, would, what do you think about like entertaining the idea of just producing an album with us? Cause what we're doing demo wise sounds incredible. And, you know, we could go to a different producer as somebody we don't know and, and we know what they can do, but, uh, um, we actually this, did. What do you mean? We originally had someone else doing the record, but he wasn't available. 
Well, that that's was why we ended up. Well, we, like, we, we, we I mean. talked like, to when we just happened when we, we originally we were looking at doing something with uh, a different producer. Yes, that's true. Uh, but it didn't. Uh, the stars didn't align that way. We got pushed in a different direction. And when we were in that facing um, a different way, that's when we decided to entertain the idea of po the possibility of Neil taking on the challenge of producing at the same time. But I mean, in the, the process that we were going to originally do and working, we probably would have come up with something completely oh, wait different. A minute, but it's just it wouldn't it be works, the same right? album. Totally. No. And we don't know what that, that album would sound like. Isn't that just life though? I don't yeah. know if it would sound as good as this one, but it would have been a hip hop album. We don't know yeah. why. <laughs> Yeah. We don't know why. <laughs> Renee would have been singing. I'm actually it was actually, it was actually was Timbaland drums. that you were trying to work with. Yeah. Yeah. He just wasn't available. Yeah. Yeah. So the but stars I mean, like looking in the past, looking at the past and like all the, the different directions that we could have gone. I mean, we could dig down to the very first album and what we did. <laughs> like it's just we just kind of go with the flow and ride the wave as it's as as it's happening and be like. This is a good idea at the time. This is the best idea at the time. This is the best, like trying to just know what is best for us and the opportunities that we have. So the, the stars aligned with one more person, which is the final comment that I have to share with you. So Chuck Daly from I Mother Earth, originally from The Salads, uh, he plays bass on this album and he's actually joining you guys for the tour that's coming up as well. So he sent me like a novel worth of comment <laughs> and I did not edit it. So this okay. is, we're going to wrap up the podcast right after this. And uh, so, you know, hang tight. Here it goes. You ready? Right. You guys ready for yeah. some words? Okay. Wait, here we go. Was this over text or email? This uh, is by text. Uh, oh, this is by Facebook messenger, actually, oh, okay. if we're being technical. So Chuck says, I adore these two. We've known each other for years. We've toured back and forth across Canada together. I've not only spent hours standing, sing along, singing alongside stage, I've also thrown limes at them, limes at them from side stage. Mid pandemic, I got a call about playing on their newest release. After hearing some music and a call with Neil, I was in. They saved my soul. I've produced and been on a lot of records. There's always a lot of cooks in the kitchen that have ideas for bass players. This was pure freedom. I played some basic shit, and then Johnny and Renee said, play more, go for it. In the studio, Neil had some thoughts until I started tracking, and then he said the same thing. Just be you, do your thing. And oh man, did I ever. It was so damn fun to have the opportunity to decorate these songs while being produced by this team. And the results were so incredibly over the top outstanding. I prayed they might ask me to play with them live one day. We've been jamming at the mothership, AKA my house tours coming up. And the other awesome thing is we're all vegan with IME. There's always an avocado for me here. Renee cooks. Johnny says he's a chef, good eating, great rock and roll. La Buena Vida. Love me some standstills. Chuck Daly. That's hilarious. They only give him an avocado. I got to yeah. talk to Chris. About it. I told I, I told him hey, avocados. I said avocados are expensive. So if they're bringing you avocados that you're kind of a big deal. Vegetarian. Vegetarian. I got We got got to eat real cheese. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard to give up the cheese. That's, the cheese that's, portion. Uh, that's unbelievable. Yeah, Chuck. Chuck. Chuck was a game changer on this record. And it was a situation where it's like. I think it's, it can be intimidating to go to a studio and put something over top of someone else's music. Right. So, but we, none of us were bass players. Right. So we were looking for a bass player, whereas in previous records, it was all about, can you just play to the guitar? Like uh, we wanted yeah, the we guitar, had, the bass to be one. Whereas I would just throw root notes down or James would throw root yeah. notes down just to have it as a layer for the mixer. But yeah, it's this time around, it was, it was, we um we wanted to entertain um the progression of us in a way that nobody has heard us before mm -hmm. so it like it we like the idea of like a lot of these songs are baritones so which it is like a bass guitar 
but how cool would it be and how cool would it sound if we just had this like like other bass line that was just there telling a different story in the song and we haven't done that before and like there's there's certain songs in rock and roll that where it's just like the bass player is putting on a clinic the whole time like if you just listen to the bass alone kings of leon like, is a great example well that. i mean like, yeah like, and there's a lot of there's a lot of acts out there that like in the song that the bass player is just doing this sort of other el other element that's not just throwing down the root notes or playing what the guitar is playing or like a little bit of candy here and there it's just like the bass player is doing some job like john uh led zeppelin like he, yeah. he, rush he, you know, the chili peppers they all have yeah them. it's yeah and it's, it's like, like their signature right but we've we've you know we've worked with people in the past and and uh or with, that were great musicians and stuff it just never glued properly with what we were doing and um and this time around i think that like we i don't think we would have brought chuck in like we under we entertained a couple different people aside from chuck too but when when we got stuff back from chuck it was like holy shit like listen to this like this is something like he's he's being himself but he's doing things he he was putting his own story into the song and uh so all we needed to do was just say do more of that <laughs> like you know like we just need you like we're not asking you to do anything other than just be yourself and do what you can do but we never had the that this story of our songs being told from his perspective or from a perspective of a different musician that way in the bass and then we just love the way how how much heavier it got like because i'm on a baritone um for majority of the stuff it's just it's sitting in the bass frequencies but just a little bit above a bass so when you bring the bass in now it's just banging in the low end it's just so much bigger so much heavier and uh so he added this um incredible um story to it but also just the depth of the low end in such a cool way we're just like we got to do this <laughs> like, and then when we asked them they're like dude you gotta you want to like tour with us or like you <laughs> yeah, know like, the chemistry yeah. was there right and he was like, better to hire than yeah the guy who did it and and he's, he was he's like, so he was dying like, to get out and tour you have no idea yeah. yeah he's like a he's like a brother too like we've spent time with him on the road when he was playing with i'm other earth and and uh you know even like when this 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 process happened like renee was talking with christian and stuff too and she's like we got like we were doing this stuff with chuck and like you know we were we were talking about like touring with them and stuff and christian was like giving us his blessing and like just like yeah it's like go for it guys fucking like he's like a brother to us too so we just it's a very it just felt very natural very cool very kind of like we're excited about bringing showing people us as a as a trio um because it, this is the evolution of it is just so organic and so um it feels very natural and very like this is where we are supposed to be and this is the music we're supposed to be writing with this individual as part of it yeah just feels right yeah it's amazing. He's, uh, and, uh, he's a great, like, he's really easy to hang out with. <laughs> so it's like, that, he's, he's, that a, helps he's a funny cause dude. We gotta, yeah. Cause we got to spend a lot of time together, you know? <laughs> yeah. I got, I got tickets to the, uh, the Ottawa date for his IME show where it's the mm -hmm. both singers. So that'll yeah. be, that'll be pretty yeah. awesome. So yeah. to, to be respectful of your time, I have one final question. Can you handle one final question? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So if, if we could go back in time and you guys could sit down with your 10 year old selves, you have cute, cute little Renee, cute little Johnny, what advice do you pass on to your 10 year old selves? Hmm. Hang on to your Reebok pumps. <laughs> <laughs> 
That shit's worth that might money be, these that days. That might, might be the best <laughs> in, in your Pokemon cards. Yeah. Yeah. That shit is worth money. Don't sell your <laughs> Beanie Babies. Yeah. Inve- invest in Tesla. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, right? That's Hey, that, that might be the best advice that any guest has given to their, their younger self. 